Nu heer hem. I can't either. I could. Oh. He used to shoot to the brush. He didn't, he didn't even phase him. No, it didn't even phase him. He never moved. He's dead, ain't he? Oh. One of the biggest ones shot this week. It'll. Definitely it, my biggest. Yeah, I shot a 191 last night, and she might give me a run for my money. My man Dylan carrying my deer off for me. I'm not going to complain about this. How's that? Is that hill? This week on Precision Outdoors, we're going to do part two of Sonora, Mexico. Uh, we had a couple great hunts last, you know, that you seen last week out there, and it only gets better. Um, we're definitely going to try to fill all our tags this week. So on the first two days of our hunt, we kind of spent most of the day in the high racks, driving around looking for deer. So on day three of the hunt, we decided that we were going to climb up on top of a mountain and kind of glass, see what we could find right away in the morning. Um, we were seeing quite a bit of movement, but nothing that we decided that we wanted to go after. It's morning three here in Sonora, Mexico. We started out the morning by doing a little bit of high racking to get to this hill that we knew we wanted to climb and kind of be able to glass out here and see if we could spot any good groups of deer to go after. Um, we didn't spot any out here, but Wes and his guide are out on one of the hills we were on yesterday glassing from and they have a nice, they think about 180 deer spotted. So we're going to try to hurry up and get over there and see if we can't get on that buck. Not long into our sit up there, Wes had sent us a message telling us that Jesus had found a good deer that, you know, it wasn't quite big enough for Chris, but it was definitely something that I would be interested in. So we got down from the mountain and head over, it was midday, probably 10, 11 o'clock, yeah. um, head over to where those guys were glassing and met him at the bottom of the mountain and Jesus took us right in, of course, right into where this deer was. and. I was able to, you know, we kind of snuck down into a little ravine and there he happened to be. And of course there's, you know, all the guys are leading the way. Jesus is in front. So by the time I see the deer, he's heading up, you know, about to disappear over top of the ridge. So I knew I had to quick get a shot off at him if I wanted any opportunity at all to take a shot at this deer. And I ended up shooting him a little back, a little further back than I would have liked. Um, That's hunting. Yeah, ended up getting his back, you know, kind of hip leg area. So I knew he was hurting. We could definitely tell he was hurting, but I wasn't able to get a second shot off right away before he crested the hill. Um, but it was a good thing we had Jesus with us because he's like a bloodhound and he, we stayed on this deer for what, two or three hours. We yeah. He wasn't going very far. Yeah. He just, we were just being real patient and not trying not to push him. And, and yeah, without Jesus, we would never stay on him. No. We just kind of, you know, taking our time, hoping he'd maybe lay down, stiffen up a little bit so we could get a little closer. And eventually we closed in on him and I was able to make a kill shot. And Oh, yeah. Look at that big. That's a big deer. Yeah. You might push me, babe. 
He might be bigger than the one I shot last night. Close? Close to the one I shot last night? See? Heavy. Heavy, yeah. Look at that right here. He's gonna... Yeah. Dad, babe. Yeah. Good job, Megan. Thank you. What do you think of that, babe? That's a big it's deer. Definitely my biggest. Yeah. You might push me, babe. He might be bigger <laughs> than the one I shot last night. Yeah. Close? Yeah. Close to the one I yeah. shot last night? Yeah. See? Heavy. Heavy, Heavy. yeah. Look at it right here. He's gonna split. Yeah. We're here in Sonora, Mexico, hunting with Black Mountain Outfitters. It's day three of our hunt, and we put quite a stock on this big old guy here. Um, he gave me a run for my money, but we were able to finally catch up with him thanks to our awesome guide, Jesus, who was amazing at tracking him. I gotta thank Brad from Scenic Valley Custom Rifles for working on my gun here. Yeah, I got, got a little western on us, but <laughs> Megan got the job done. So, uh, probably one of the biggest ones shot this week. It'll. Definitely my biggest. Yeah, I shot a 191 last night and she might give me a run for my money. So <laughs> it, uh, I know she's hoping it's bigger, but uh, I hope it's one inch smaller, but either way I'm happy. <laughs> so. Girl and guide measurements are different anyways. Megan, <laughs> Megan's killed two mule deer and she's been pregnant both times. So we're expecting in uh, end of June. Um, she's been getting pretty fussy with me. Shortly after we got back from Mexico, we decided to have a little gender reveal party to find out what what our baby is that we're having and we shot some bo um, balloons that were filled with paint with our bow and found out that we're having a little boy so we're going to be adding another hunter to the family. Yeah, she finally gave me a boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yep, my third mule deer, I guess. Um, second with rifle and definitely my biggest. Yep, so. it was a beautiful buck. On day four, um, the first morning, we went to where he had already had, you know, harvested three great bucks and didn't find anything that uh, dad would like to go after. So we went in a little deeper, went about a mile off the road, back behind where we'd been hunting and got up on a mountain. It wasn't very long and, and actually dad, Jesus has found a lot of the deer we ended up harvesting and seeing. I mean, it, like I said, it's hard to glass out there and you definitely learned a lot from him. But dad actually found a buck that the second he seen it, he said, he's the one, he's big enough. And when he went to get out to let us look through his spotting scope, he kicked it. And it lost the spot and we never did find the deer again that night. We tried, we even moved to another a high point and we never did find the deer again. So we were starting to think maybe he's going crazy all these years trying to shoot a 200 inch deer. Now he's starting to imagine it. But uh, so the next morning, which would be morning number five, we get out there, get back in there to the same spot. And we're there for like 10 minutes. And once again, dad goes, I got him. He, dad found him again. And as he's going to get out, <laughs> he kicks his tripod two days in a row and we can't find the deer. And we're looking, I mean, in Jesus, every deer we found the whole week, Jesus had already already seen it or he found it within seconds of us finding it. And he couldn't find this deer. So now we're really thinking, Dad's he's, he's losing his mind. And Jesus finally said, you know what, let's just go. Let's just take off and let's go to the next high point. Just keep going until we get to the area that he thinks he's seen him in and, and hopefully we find him. And wouldn't you know it, we come up on the next point and Jesus finds him right away. Um, we get set up, the deer is 400, 400 450 from us. Dad gets set up, um, deer's chasing does, other little bucks around. And this probably goes on for an hour, uh, no shot opportunity. So we just keep kind of moving with the deer. And finally we think we put the deer to bed and we're laying there in the hot sun for, I don't know, probably two hours, waiting for, you know, we can see a doe, waiting for the buck to come out. And all of a sudden, about five, 600 yards from where we had already seen the deer last, the buck pops out. And we're not in, we're sitting on a rock point about like this. So you're the whole setup is really tricky. We're, and we cannot physically get a shot to where this deer is. 
um, especially at that distance, you know, um, doing a proper setup and everything. So we just decided to get down and take off to the next point. And when we get over there, um, the buck had bedded down again. Make sure to check out Precision Outdoors on Instagram and Facebook. We're here in Mexico, morning number five. We've seen a shooter, what, what I think is was a shooter last night. Seen him in the sunlight, so it was a little tough to tell. Only seen him for about 10 seconds. But uh, we're going back out in the same area this morning and see if we can spot him or, or another one like it. But you get back on this side, there's no roads or anything. So I think we're in a pretty good area to Maybe try to find what I'm looking for. I'd like to get into that 200 range if I can, but we've seen a lot of deer. We've seen uh, three 180 plus, and we've got all three of them, so I feel like we've been pretty lucky on that end of it. So hopefully I can get a little more lucky and get a 200. And Joe and Megan and Dylan are over on the other uh, different ranch, and hopefully Joe can find something today to get to. So. We'll see see what happens. days in a row. Bad luck. But we know where he is, so we're going to sneak around see if we can get closer. See his horn. He's coming to that opening. Yeah, I gotta shoot right over the door. Yeah, that'll be fine. You can shoot them. I mean, it's not going to be the best video, but or another way. it's up to you. If you want to shoot them, shoot them. Then, yeah, shoot them. Uh -huh. This is your once in a lifetime buck. You shoot them. If he gets up, you shoot him. Where's he? Just to the right. Good. One more. Put another one in. He's going down. Down? Yeah, I can see him down, laying down.
Uy, grande. <laughs> Pick up. It's only about 300 yards, so we almost made her. Almost there. Almost home, sweet home. We got the rest of the day off. Then tomorrow, you're gonna help Jim find one. We're gonna go after coos deer. I haven't decided yet. Want to shoot a big, big coos deer, so we'll see. We have made it. Back to the pickup. On morning six of the hunt, I actually, I was kind of worn out and not feeling very well, so I stayed back. And of course, that's when my dad happens to come across a buck that he decided to harvest. and. He made a good shot on it and... Let's make a move. If we get a decent shot, we'll take it. If we don't, we won't. I can't get through the brush. There you have him. Oh, look at that. seven here in Mexico. We are all tagged out on mule deer finally. Um, Dad killed a 202, I killed a 180 and 190. Megan killed a mid 180s, probably like 186. And then uh, yesterday Jim killed a real big heavy uh, 4x4, probably mid 170s, beautiful buck. And Joe, uh, he also got one too. So we're on a coos deer. Um, Jim set up in a different area. We hiked here a little ways this morning, got up on this mountain, looking uh, over a big mountain. And uh, this is a good area for coos deer. So got our sights set pretty high. We're looking for a booner. Um, we'll see what happens. We got one day, it's our last day. So we concentrate on mule deer. Now we're gonna try to get a couple coos deer. So stick with us. Hopefully uh, we find a big one here this morning yet. This mountain? Yeah. To the left, down low. <laughs> ready, Jesus? Really difficult. Dylan, do you just tell me when you're ready? Everyone ready? Took a 700 yard shot on a really, really nice coos deer. We're thinking uh, 105, roughly in that range. Great buck. Um, got a kicker on his brow tine, heavy, really, really nice coos deer. So, first shot, I hit a little high, adjusted the turret, and uh, we think I center punched him. We're not 100% sure, but he went down into a, a hole and he never come back out. He looked hurt, so we think we're good. Um, we're just gonna sit here for a little while, just make sure he doesn't come back up and uh, hike over there and see if we didn't get him. following it here and we think he's dead down in this bottom somewhere. Yeah. 
Well, here he is, 700 yard shot, Mexican coos deer. Um, we rough scored him right around 110. That's pushing uh, Boone and Crockett for a coos deer. So I'm extremely happy. Um, I got to air the gun out again this week, up to 700 yards and, and made a good shot and got him. Um, he's a beautiful buck. I think I'm actually gonna full body mount him. Uh, not a lot of, probably won't shoot a lot of coos deer in my life. So um, we're used to hunting Midwest whitetail. So it's a little, little deceiving for us. But uh, this, is, this is a trophy of a lifetime in the coos deer world. Um, you got a split brow tine, uh, long beams, heavy, dark horns, um, exactly what I was looking for. He's just a beautiful buck. Uh, we killed some great mule deer this week. I got to shoot a 190 at 700 yards, which um, was my longest shot ever. I had killed a few at 600. Um, now I got to sh shoot him at 700. And only being probably a 60, 70 pound animal, um, I'm pretty happy with, with myself making that shot and got to tip my hat to Brad with Scenic Valley Custom Firearms. I don't know how many times I've said that this year, but uh, one man operation, builds the guns all himself, um, start to finish, and he does an unbelievable job. My man Dylan carrying my deer out for me. I'm not going to complain about this. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.